information. Uh, the other thing, sorry, bear with me. The other thing uh, to be reminded of is uh, there is a chat feature um, as part of this call. So if you have any questions or queries um, that might come up as we're going through, um, just pop them in the chat and we can answer them at the end. Um, so without further ado, we move on to the first slide. So in this session, we're going to cover a, a range of things. Um, we're going to cover what Central is and who we are as an institution. Um, we're going to look a little bit at our facilities and our staff. We're also going to talk about the differences between a specialist institution and a traditional university. Um, we're going to look at the student support that's available at Central. And of course, we're going to look at our undergraduate courses, so our BA ONS degree courses. So we'll look at what they entail, the application process, um, the audition and interview process. And then at the end, we will finish off with question time. So if you go to the next slide. So who are we? Um, so we call ourselves Central for short, but we are, of course, Royal Central School of Speech and Drama. But you can just call us Central. Um, so we've been a drama school since 1906. Um, so we were founded at the Royal Albert Hall. So we've been around for well over 100 years, training up actors, musical theatre performers, prop makers, designers, all manner of creative and performance practitioners you can think of, um, including some that you may have heard of, which we will come to later. Um, so at Central, we're really an international community. So our students and staff come from all over the world and they also go out into the world via the placements that they undertake and graduate destinations. Um, we have a very strong partnership um, and collaboration with the industry. So throughout your training, you work alongside industry professionals and your training really enables you to make those important industry connections. We also have a really strong relationship with our alumni so they come back and they give back to the students um, so we have a lot of sort of cross-pollination with the industry we offer the broadest range of drama and performing arts courses so not just our undergraduate courses but a range of postgraduate courses and research degrees so we also have a direct impact on the industry that way too our research feeds into um, the practices um, so facilities. Um, so we moved to our current site in Swiss Cottage in London in 1957. Um, and we get to benefit from being very close to the centre of London. Um, we're about 10 to 15 minutes from the West End via public transport, which again is very useful because that's also where a lot of the industry are based. Um, so our building is really beautiful and it has a mixture of the old original building and then much newer developments. So we can look at those in a bit more detail in the next slide. So this is just some of the facilities available at Central. Um, also really encourage you to take a virtual tour, which is on our website. So you can just search virtual tour on our website to find that. Um, it's just a nice way of looking at going inside to our, some of our theatre spaces and, and uh, the spaces where students uh, train. We have three theatres, three uh, licensed theatres, meaning they're spaces where public performances take place. Um, and those are really key spaces given that we're a drama school. So two of them are black box studios, which hold around 70 to 80 audience members per show, um, depending on the sort of configuration of that show. Um, I'm also able with these to do less traditional productions. So things in the round, immersive, that sort of thing. We've even done like a parkour show there before. Um, and then we have our main theatre, which is our embassy theatre. So the, the image on the right there shows the front of Central. So if you come in through the front of this entrance and then go straight ahead, you arrive at the MC Theatre, which is a proscenium arch theatre seating 244 audience members. And it's fully kitted out with the tech and equipment that students need, that we need. Um, we've got a full flight tower. Um, the stage is hollow, so you can put in a trap door. We've had a revolve in there. So um, our third year showcases and performances mainly take place in these uh, theatre spaces. We also have... Uh, music practice rooms, uh, performance studios, which are a bit like rehearsal rooms, but a little bit more sort of advanced. Um, we have movement studios with sprung floors. We have um, rehearsal rooms and then specialist workshops like our props workshop, which has a washer room, uh, sorry, our props workshop um, and our costume workshop, which has a 
washer room, a dryer room and uh, specialised fitting rooms. And uh, we also have change rooms, of course. Then we've got lighting studios, professional recording studios, basically everything that we could possibly need to uh, enhance uh, training. And we've also got one of the largest workshops in London where our sets are built and painted by the students. Um, so just moving on to the next slide. So this is just a few of the graduates who have come through Central. It's really just the very tip of the iceberg. Um, we mostly have actors on here because they are the most recognisable. Um, so for example, starting from the top left, we've got Naomi Aki. So she is an acting collaborative and devised theatre graduate. So she was most recently in the new Star Wars film. She was in End of the World season two. She's working a lot. Um, then next we've got Dame Judi Dench, who you might have heard of as well. Um, perhaps most notable for her role in James Bond, but she's obviously done a huge amount um, throughout her career and has had a really long and really varied uh, career. And then we've got Riz Ahmed. So Riz did our MA in acting, but he's done all sorts of things, including the recently uh, award-winning Sound of Metal, which you might have seen, um, and a range of other films like Venom and Nightcrawler. Uh, and then we've got Andrew Garfield. So he's currently in Tick, Tick, Boom on Netflix, which is out at the moment. Um, but he's done a whole host of things like uh, The Social Network, Spider-Man, Never Let Me Go. Then down onto the next line on the left there, we've got Carl Queensborough. So he's also an acting collaborative and devised theatre grad. Um, but he plays Hamilton in Hamilton the Musical in the West End at the moment. And then we've got Gareth, Gareth Fry, who you might not recognise because he's not an actor. Um, but he did our uh, sound course um, and he's a Tony award winning sound designer. So he's worked on The Encounter by Complicite. Um, he did all of the sound Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. And he also did the London Olympics. And then you've got uh, Joe Alwyn there. So he was in The Favourite, uh, which came out a few years ago. You might remember because it won lots of Oscars. Um, and he actually landed a role in his final year at Central in a Billy Lynn's long halftime walk. Um, and he is also currently dating Taylor Swift, which is sort of side, side information. Um, and then there's Kit Harrington. So probably most famous for Game of Thrones, uh, where he plays Jon Snow. He's done lots of stuff uh, on stage and on screen. Um, and he still comes back to Central to get advice from tutors and things like that. So this is just, as I said, the tip of the iceberg. If you look at any of our course pages, you can see some of the graduates that have come through that course and where people are ending up. So um, do take a look um, at that. If we move on to the next slide, just a little bit about our staff. So we're really lucky at Central because the core staff we have are academic um, and leading practitioners, and that really sets us apart. Because um, you're being taught by people who are leading practitioners in their field, um, many of them are still working outside of their teaching, which is great for connections for you, but also for just teaching you things that are most up to date um, and being just sort of always sort of having having their finger on the pulse of what's actually going on in the industry. Um, and many write books, which are the, then the go to books for their particular discipline. Um, so many of our staff are key researchers. So our research was announced as world leading by the Research Excellence Framework. Um, but then in addition to uh, core teachers on site and on our faculty, we have a whole host of visiting lecturers um, who, they, who might come in for a lecture series or a master class or a one off session in specialist areas, or they might be working on a show with students. Um, so, for example, in our second year um, stage management and technical theatre course, we bring in a company that works with pyrotechnics, and fireworks and fake gunshots and that sort of thing to make sure our students are doing it safely and properly. Um, or we'll bring in specific dialect coaches and things like that. So next, we move on to the next slide. We'll just have a little look at the difference between a specialist institution and a traditional university. So you, you might be looking at a whole load of different courses at different places. And some of these might be drama schools and some of these might be more traditional universities. But um, what are the main differences? Because there are some really quite key and important differences that it's, it's good to be aware of. So when you train um, for a BA acting degree at Central, at a specialised institution like Central or another drama school, um, or really with any of our courses, you get twice the contact hours that you would at a traditional university. So you're completely immersed from day one 
of the course and it's a very big investment physically and emotionally so it's very like full time um it's also uh, focused towards a specific career so for many of our courses you'll undertake professional placements or for example on our theatre practice courses you'll develop a five-year plan and meet with industry experts to get tips and tricks and advice and make connections um, and whichever course you're on you're being prepared to enter the industry and to be a specialist in a certain area um, so you're very specialized and then it's focused and practical and a practical style of training so it's very hands-on and it's very vocational meaning you learn through doing so you still might read about a subject but you'll be using and applying your skills straight away so by contrast traditional university is much more academic which means courses have more theory and essays and exams um, which isn't to say there aren't elements of some of that on uh, our contemporary performance practice courses for instance but for the most part, they are not academic degrees, they're vocational, hands-on um, training. And traditional university is broader in terms of careers as well. So the skills are, transi are transitional, so they can uh, prepare you for a variety of industries. Whereas if you go to a drama school, you're really training in one area, you're becoming a specialist in one area. Um, You'll also have less contact hours and more independent study. So if you were doing a drama degree at a traditional university, you might have a seminar in the morning and then not have a lecture until the following day in the afternoon, for instance. And you'll be expected to do independent study in the library um, during that time. Whereas at Central, you would be very much uh, in the building, training, um, fully immersed um, and engaging all the time. Um, you can also do joint honours degrees and pull in modules from other courses with a traditional, with a traditional uh, degree. But as I mentioned at Central, you will be a specialist in a specific area. So you'll be really highly skilled um, in one area. So um, although we are a small specialist institution, we do uh, sort of have the best of both worlds because we are part of the University of London. So you still apply through UCAS and you still have access to a student loan and maintenance loans. And the fees are still the same as a traditional university. You also get access to things like Senate House Library because of that's part of the University of London. Um, so we have we have sort of the best of both in that way. But if we move on to the next slide, we can just look, talk a bit about student support that's available. So being a small specialist institution um, means that we can offer um, really tailored support to students, and it's something that we take really seriously. Um, because we know it's a big deal um, coming to university. Um, for many people, it means moving to London. For some people, they've never lived in a city before. Um, and on top of that, the training and the study can be very rigorous um, and very, uh, as I mentioned earlier, intensive. So we really recognise that. And so student support is really important. So we have our um, Student Advice Centre um, providing our student support, which includes um, accommodation support. So. They help students find appropriate accommodation depending on where they would like to live, who they would like to live with and their budget. Um, and students tend to live in a mixture of um, halls or uh, private housing, like renting. Um, and that really depends on you. You sort of have to decide what's best for you. Um, but they will help you through that process. They can also offer financial support. So support with managing your finances. So whether that's with budgeting or just you've, come into some financial difficulty and you need some guidance um, in addition to the scholarships and bursaries that you can find a list of on our website that you can apply for we also have a hardship fund so that's there for emergencies um, then we also have the learning center so that helps with uh, learning skills development so whether it's things like referencing for essays or um, working with different assessment methods because there are a range of ways you can be assessed at central they offer help with that um, we also have a student wellbeing officer within our student union, so um, they specifically um, support and run campaigns for students to help with their wellbeing. We also have our neuro inclusion and disability centre, so this offers tailored support to individuals um, and we work closely with them with whatever help they might need. Um, and we can bring in things with help like applying for disabled students allowance or just really any additional support that they might require. Um, we also have free counselling, so you're, you can access seven free sessions per year 
and the waiting times are really good so it's usually about two weeks from the initial assessment to the first session. We also have care leaver support so that's a bespoke package of support for care leaver students and we are part of the care leaver covenant um, and our care leaver support includes a number of things including uh, accommodation references and personalised support so that's just a an overview of the support that's available at Central. If there's anything that you're concerned about um, before applying, you can always email us as well and we'll be able to tell you the support that's available. Um, so the three undergraduate degrees we offer at Central. Um, so within each of these degrees are individual courses, but these are the broad sort of areas. So we have our BA, BA ONS Acting, uh, BA ONS Contemporary Performance Practice, and BA on theatre practice. So we'll start by looking at the acting. Um, so for this course, you have three pathways. You have acting, 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 collaborative and device theatre, and acting, musical theatre. So for this, you make one application, but when you submit your audition, you're considered for all three pathways. So we match your skills with the area in which we think they're best suited and the areas we want to explore further with you. So basically the panel start to sort of see where your strengths lie and which pathway would be best suited to you. So you could be recalled from your first audition for one or more courses. So it's important to underline that whichever course you do, you will receive actor training. So you'll be an actor and able to go for a range of roles on screen and stage when you graduate. They just have slightly different specialisms. Um, so if we move to the next slide. Um, oh, that's just some examples of uh, some of the styles of show we have. So we do a mixture of um, classical and contemporary actor training and our shows, they're not just Shakespeare, it's, you'll engage with new writing and a whole range of, of other um, types of writing as well. Um, so you do put on public performances in your final year um, and that's just some example of those some examples of those um, and as well as sort of friends and family and your peers you have key industry members and agents attending those shows um, which is part of uh, your sort of industry liaison getting you ready um, to graduate and go into the industry in the in your final year um, but just to look a little bit at the entry requirements so you need to have 64 UCAS points, which is the equivalent of two Cs at A-level. But there are other qualifications that also are equivalent to that. So you can use, there's a UCAS uh, like tariff checker, which can uh, basically let you know whether it, your grades amount to 64 UCAS points. Um, but selection is through audition. Ultimately, that's probably the, the, the most important part of the process, but that's not to say you shouldn't put effort into other, into other elements. So with your personal statement, that is another way for us to get to know you and it is important that you still you know show us your passion and, and dedication there as well um there's also uh on there it says an IELTS score of seven or more so that's for where if English isn't your first language um there is a, a sort of certain English language requirement for uh, central so it's a score of seven or more um but we can go into that in more detail if people have questions about that um at the end if anyone wants to know a bit more about that so we move on to the next slide. So just to remind you that you apply through UCAS. Um, so for some schools, it's direct application through the website, um, but we would be one of your five UCAS choices. So that you would do it through UCAS. Um, so you've applied and you're now preparing your uh, self-tape for your first audition. So there are three rounds. Uh, there's the online self-tape and then the initial recall and then a final recall uh, on campus. So you can see those on the bottom right-hand side there. That's the three sort of steps. We'll just talk about the first round, which is the self-tape to begin with. Um, so we ask quite a lot um, at that stage because that way we can see as much of you as possible. Um, it gives us a chance to really see what you can do and where your strengths are. And as I mentioned, you're being considered for all three pathways. So it's an opportunity to see where your strengths lie um, in that way as well. So we ask for a classical monologue and a contemporary monologue, and it is completely up to you what these are, but um, we, you know, you choose those, but um, we do just ask that the contemporary speech is uh, post-1960 and not from a, a film script, and that the classical speech, um, it needs to, we actually have a list on the website and you don't have 
to do any of the monologues on the list, but it gives you a really good idea of what we're looking for in terms of the classical speech. So um, you can use that as a starting point and you can use something from the list if you want to, but you don't have to. So go there if you're um, unsure. Um, then we ask for a devised piece. So if you go to the audition process page, we have a selection of painting um, and you choose one of these and you create a response to it. So you can do pretty much whatever you want for this. Um, you can do um, dance or mime or puppetry, or we just really want to see what your creative response to stimulus, like how you respond. Um, then we also have a song on the list. So, and that's unaccompanied. So even if you don't want to be considered for musical theatre, we do recommend that you try the song, um, whether you can sing or not, because um, we are looking for people with a willingness to take risks and to go outside the comfort zone. Um, it's also important to sort of remember that it is about telling a story more than having a perfect singing voice. So um, that's sort of more what we want to see than, than perfection. So take your time um, to do the research and preparation for your self-tape. Um, we advise that you don't do like a million takes, but just uh, prepare properly, record it three times and then choose the best one. So we're not looking for high production value or this perfect polished piece of cinema. Um, we just really want to see you and who you are. Um, so then the tape is reviewed by at least two panellists independently. Um, and then you'll be recalled for the initial recall, which is also online and that's round two. So it really depends on the course um, or courses that you're recalled for, what you're asked to do. And it could be a self-tape or it could be a live Zoom audition. Um, you might be asked to uh, build on what you did in the first round or to deliver something again a little bit differently. You'll receive very clear instructions of, of what's required um, at the time. Um, but that's that step. Um, and then for the final recall, which will be in person on our campus, That'll be with the course leaders um, and we'll incorporate workshopping and you'll just go into more depth um, building on the first two rounds. And it will also include an interview. So hopefully you can see through this process, we're really getting to know you as an individual and seeing you know, really where your strengths lie and like where you'll be best suited at Central. Um, if we move on to the next slide. Um, I'm sure people will have questions about the auditions and if you do we will cover those at the end but just pop them in the chat for now um so just a note on free auditions so there is an audition fee which is current uh, 40 pounds for the whole process um but we do give away a lot of free auditions a lot a lot of them so um wherever possible we like to try and remove that as a barrier if it is one for people um and we have various criteria for free auditions and you just need to meet one of those criteria so there's a link there to um, a website page um, or you can just search for your auditions on the website. So check and see, you could be eligible. And if you're not sure, just get in touch because we really um, wouldn't want uh, that to uh, be a barrier for anyone. Um, so moving on to the next slide, uh, looking at this, uh, the BA on's contemporary performance practice. So this is again a three-year degree. It has three different courses within it. Um, and this is broadly speaking about making performance that can change lives and how theatre can be used as a tool for social transformation and change. So we have drama applied theatre and education. So that's all about making theatre in communities and non-traditional settings. Um, you might work with different individuals like homeless people, people in prisons, refugees. Um, and explore performance as a tool for uh, changing lives, essentially. Um, then we have experimental arts and performance. So that's all about exploring new forms of performance. So you've got something to say and you want to say it through performance. This course will really nurture your individual artistic voice. Um, then we've got writing for performance. So this focuses on the role of playwriting through the lens of using drama as a tool for social change. So you'll cover technical skills required for a variety of mediums, including traditional playwriting, um, but also areas like the Baton Theatre and solo performance. Um, so we look at these each in a bit more detail. So drama applied theatre and education. So this is, of all our degrees, this is the one that's probably closest to a BA drama degree at a traditional university. So you'll get to perform and direct and write and work with people to facilitate the making of performance. So just to be clear, 
this isn't an acting course it's much more like a, a drama degree so it have a mixture of theoretical and practical um, and it'll be taught through lectures and seminars um, workshops and collaborative projects um, and it also gives you access to Levy Hume funding um, for projects both in the UK and overseas so students have done some really amazing things um, working for instance with uh, young people in Detroit um, uh, young LGBTQ plus um, charities in the Greater Manchester we've had projects in Hong Kong South Africa Mumbai so lots of opportunities um, and then we move on to writing for performance. So, um, as I mentioned, this is socially engaged writing course, um, but it offers lots of opportunities for different writing projects. You get to work with professional play playwrights and learn directly from them. Um, and you look at all kinds of writing, so solo, stand up, political theatre, verbatim, as well as the more traditional types. Um, get to undertake residency, so you might go into a community and immerse yourself there and then your writing will come from that. So it's about using these sort of experiences and spaces to inform your writing and give you influences and inspiration from a different, from a range of different settings. And it's all through the lens of social change and uh, making real world uh, impact. Then if we move on to experimental arts and performance. So you really get to experiment in this course um, and create new forms of performance. So you can see a range of different images on the left yet there, which should sort of give an, an idea of just how many, just the sort of scope of, of what's possible in this course. Um, so you'll produce and create your own types of performance and, you know, as well as developing your own individual artistic voice, you learn really essential practical skills that are needed to make art and performance. So things like how to apply for Arts Council funding. It's really helping to develop sort of cultural leaders um, as well as artists. Um, you also get to participate in festivals and work with national and international arts organisations. So that is that. So this is just an outline of what's required in terms of applications and interviews for these courses. Um, so the UCAS uh, points are slightly different. Um, so it's at 9,620 UCAS points for all, for all three. Um, which is about, which is three C's, three B's at A-level. Um, for all of them, there's an element of course talk and some element of a workshop uh, in, the, in the interview uh, and application process. You'll also need to provide a piece of writing. So for writing performance and uh, drama applied theatre and education, that's a piece of academic writing, which should be marked with comments. But for experimental arts and performance, it can be a review of a live performance. And you'll also need to, um, you'll also have a portfolio um, component to that as well um, and then there's of course an interview the actual interview side of it so for a couple of these you might end up in a group, group interview which really gives us gives us an idea of how you interact with others and how you approach discussion and that kind of thing and that should sort of give you a sense of what we're looking for in those courses as well just sort of through that process um, so moving on now to the BA on theatre practice so this has the most courses and um, sort of within the, the wider degree um, but it's they're all three-year degrees um, and there are nine pathways or specialisms covering a range of uh, theatre craft uh, design and production practices so we just start from the top left there with costume construction so that's making costume for performance then you have a uh, design performance that looks at both set and costume design um, but you can choose to specialize in one of those if you want to and then uh, we have lighting design. So how to design uh, lighting for a set for production and how lighting can be used to create like various effects and meanings. And then production lighting is slightly different is how to actually execute those designs and make it happen um, in a technical sense. Then uh, prop making. So prop making is making props that the actors will interact with and use on stage. Again, it's all part of this wider storytelling uh, picture. Um, the scenic construction for stage and screen, so that's the actual building of the sets, following the designs of the designers. And then for scenic painting for stage and screen, so actually painting those sets and using various techniques and, and methods to create effects. For example, you might make something look like it's been outside rusting in the rain for 10 years. That might be something that the story, the production needs. 
Um, then we have stage management and technical theatre. So this is very stage management focused, um, learning all the essential skills required to be a stage manager, um, working across shows, but it does also allow opportunities for exploring technical theatre too and, and this technology. And then we have sound design and production. So this is about both designing sound. So again, how is sound used to create various moods and meanings to support the storytelling of a piece? also how to actually practically make that happen in a technical sense. So all of these disciplines contribute to everything you see in a performance, to how stories are made and told, and it all works together to create that sort of seamless experience that you see on the stage. So it's all about collaboration, which is, is very important at Central. So we move on to the next slide. We'll just look a little bit at sort of what the course content Woo! is. <laughs> So for year one, for all the courses, um, it's about getting the foundational skills and professional competence, for example, uh, pattern drafting, costume construction, or wood graining for scenic painting. Um, and we do say that from day one, you're treated like a professional, so you're working as part of a team, you're learning your skills straight away and putting them into practice straight away through collaborative work and skills development. Um, in your first year, you also do the Tableau project, so um, you do various projects, but the Tableau project is, is one of them. It's on the next slide. Um, and uh, that's basically you take a still from a film or a TV show and then you recreate that scene. So the theatre practice students all work on that together. So this is our first year students uh, work here. So that's the scene in that image there. It's from Call the Midwife, I want to say. Um, Scott might know exactly which show it's from. <laughs> I think this one was Pride and Prejudice, this one. Pride and Prejudice, great. <laughs> um, and that's, so they, they've recreated that scene there. So you can see that everything there, they've sort of made, painted, um, designed. Um, so that's quite, apart from the people, obviously. Um, then in year two, that's where, that's about exploring professional identity. So, Every single student who comes to Central is able to identify and develop their own identity and sort of find their niche. Um, so you're building your um, enterprise and your management and your leadership skills. Um, so it's important in addition to having the technical skills, you also need professional people skills. And again, it comes back to that point of collaboration. It's a really important, important part of the process of how we work together and how you develop as a professional. You'll also undertake professional placements, which we'll look at a bit in a bit more detail soon. But, um, you know, students do a whole range of different things. We've had prop makers working on Jurassic World 2. We've had people going into um, the National Theatre and the Royal Opera House, a whole range of things. Um, you'll also work on the shows and um, you'll start leading on projects. Are we on yet? Oh, yeah. Uh, What's my face? Um, yeah, um, you'll start leading on projects and this is, yes, okay. I realize we're on year three, not on year two. Um, <laughs> um, you'll be leading on projects and shows, so moving up into higher roles within the production teams. Um, and you'll also participate in the theatre practice exhibition, which um, is, here's some of the work that students have done before. So you really encourage our students to uh, innovate and experiment um, while they're at Central. And we talk about our students being the future of theatre and performance. And this means that we encourage them to do things differently and to really bring their own unique vision to their work um, and push boundaries. So you can make a really big impact when you go into the industry and shape the future of performance, essentially. So these are, this is just some images of some of the work from the different courses, for costume, um, scenic painting, lighting, a whole range there. Um, we also have industry members invited to that exhibition so they can see your work and they're always looking for the next sort of assistance and things like that. Um, we move on to the next slide. So entry to our theatre practice courses is through interview. Um, and we do ask to see a digital portfolio. Um, again, it's just a really good way of us getting to know you and getting to know your passion. Um, You'll also have a course talk and there'll be a practical workshop and you need uh, 64 to 120 UCAS points. Um, 
we move on to the next slide. Um, this is just uh, touching again on the placements that you can undertake. So these are just some of the companies that our students have worked with. So you have really familiar names there like BBC, uh, Royal Shakespeare Company, um, National Theatre, uh, but then we also have uh, Harvey Nichols. Um, so they have amazing, the amazing shop fronts at Christmas um, and they require a really high level of skill and design and production management. So basically, whatever you're interested in, whatever you know your, your passion is, um, on your course, you'll sort of be helped to um, just drill down into that even more and develop more in that area. So you can sort of tailor your, tailor your training um, to go into the area that you really want to go into. Um, so lastly, we'll just talk a little bit about graduate destinations. So um, our grads go into a whole host of different areas and destinations. Again, I would just suggest that you look on the website, look at the different course pages, and um, you can see the different graduate destinations there in a bit more detail. Um, but they go into film, TV, theatre, live events, festivals, even things like Lon the London Olympics. Um, you know, you can see a whole range there. Um, so, and as it says, some even set up their own companies, um, but quite a lot of them do actually. So um, I'll just see if Scott has anything to add to that. No, no, and apologies, I may have accidentally skipped a slide at some point in there, so my <laughs> apologies. <laughs> Um, great. So uh, let's just see what's happening in the chat, what your questions are. Um, as I have to leave earlier because I'm going to leave my question, can I book a room at Central if I need a space for practicing, of course, after my classes? Scott, do you want to take that? Yeah, so I mean, theoretically, you can. Um, the reason I say theoretically is because the contact hours that you'll have, they are pretty intensive and, and you are in for long hours. So I, I always think it's worth kind of having a think about kind of the, the, the balance of, uh, of, of your time at Central and not at Central. So uh, it would be very, very easy to, to you know, you'd be in, if you're on the acting course, you might be in 8.30 till 6. If you're on the perhaps you might be in 10 till 5, Monday to Friday. But you know, do you want, is it healthy in the, in what's the right balance for you to stay in and, and, and do more work? You can do, um, but we do always um, suggest kind of looking at a balance. Um, rooms are central, obviously, because of the intensive learning, they're not easy to come by. Depends on what room you want, of course, but our, our practice rooms, for instance, are the most easy to kind of um, book out or find, if you will, um, than empty that, so that you can use them. So yes, it is possible, but um, we really, really uh, stress a good kind of like, uh, work-life balance if you will um so for the song part of the audition is there a time limit so the song um shouldn't be more than two minutes um that's that's the absolute limit um the next question is is the 40 pounds charge for all auditions so the acting course the acting degree is the only degree that requires audition um and it is £40 for every step of the audition process. So it covers the whole audition process. Um, but there aren't auditions for the other courses. So you don't have to audition for contemporary performance practice and you don't have to audition for theatre practice. Um, when are, sorry, my mouse has just gone somewhere. When are the auditions meant to be in and what type of song will we need to perform? So, um, the audition, when you apply, you'll receive um, information from Central about the latest date that you can submit your self-tape. Um, and um, you, you do need to apply by the 26th of January, that's the UCAS deadline. And then you'll be, as long as you apply before that time, you'll be given, you'll definitely be given an audition and you'll be given um, a time frame in which to complete your self-tape and to send it in. In terms of type of song that you'll need to perform, it can be any song of your choosing. Um, but again, as you mentioned, it's it's good to be able to show um, that you're telling a story through the song. Um, that's sort of what what we want to see um, more than a sort of perfect singing voice. Do you have anything to add to that, Scott? 
Um, not too much, but it kind of ties into the question after, really, about uh, recommending choosing songs. I mean, we, we, we're not going to recommend any any type of song necessarily, but again, it's that real point about needing to tell a story and therefore what kind of songs lend themselves to that. And yeah, often, you know, musicals can lend themselves to that because there's a very clear kind of uh, character who's singing, character art, what they're trying to do. So uh, a lot of people do go for musical songs, but you certainly don't have to. Um, over what period will the audition process take place? Um, so it, it really varies depending on when you sort of get your audition in, uh, get your application in, sorry. Um, it's, I mean, I don't know if you can be specific in terms of weeks and months. I don't think we can. Um, it could be, I mean, you'll sort of be given, you'll be given deadlines for your the various elements and then dates for the, if you get to the final stage, you'll be given sort of dates for that part. Um, don't know if you want to have anything, Scott. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's quite a fluid process for the self-tape, again, as, as, as Sophie says, depending on kind of when you make the application. Second round also, so the initial recall that is, that's also fairly fluid, again, because of the nature of um, how we're doing it. The final round, so the final recall, now that's a little bit more set in stone because often that is dependent on, you know, when there is space at Central and obviously we have the course leaders who run that, their time to actually do that. So you t tend to see that the, the final recalls are kind of after Christmas, half term uh, and Easter break, usually. So it's at times when there's definitely spaces in Central to actually undertake them. Um, then we have a question about the classical speech in the audition. Should it be? So it's basically the classical speech. It needs to be um, pre-1700. Um, so that's sort of the era of sort of Shakespeare, Jacobean plays, um, Elizabethan plays. But it doesn't have to be, um, it, it can be, it doesn't have to have been written in the English language originally. It will need to be delivered in the English language. Hopefully that makes sense. But um, there you can you can do them in any gender you can do you have quite a lot of freedom with it but it just needs to be pre-1700 um so i suppose technically yes it would be written in verse but it doesn't have to be english verse hopefully that makes sense <laughs> um does centra offer any type of extracurricular activities for those who'd like to learn more skills while studying um i think the thing that we would often just mention is that you your your time at central is so full on that you you might not have as much time for sort of extracurricular things um but i'm sure but there are societies and, and student union events and many other things available for you to get involved with um did you want to add anything to that scott yeah i mean it's, it's like you say i mean there are there are we do have a student union that has lots of clubs and societies um, you know, anything from kind of um, poetry society, football society, um, there's a real range of different things and they can support you if there is something that you want to start up with some fellow students as well. Um, but again, yeah, it is just about, you know, managing your time as wisely as possible. But, but the answer is yes, there is the opportunity. Uh, it can be a really great release in some ways from the work you're doing. Um, and you also theoretically, again, have access to uh, University of London club societies however that one is slightly more difficult because the traditional university model of like Wednesday afternoons for club societies would typically be time when you're actually in lessons in in, in class so um, I'd say kind of think about the central clubs and societies as a more accessible route. Will all applicants be granted a chance to audition? Um, as long as you apply before the UCAS deadline then you will get be granted a chance to audition after that we can't guarantee that you will because you know it could go on and on um so as long as it's before the deadline um so could you explain the difference is it the differences between production lighting and lighting design please um you're looking yeah, for a course that's a course. really good question really good question a question we get a lot actually um i mean in a way kind of a a good way to think about it is um if lighting design is the the what and the why in regards to lighting productions and live performance and then production lighting is okay how do we actually make this happen so it's almost but what i would say uh almost to to kind of um, help out there is 
the courses overlap quite a lot. So if you're doing design, you will still learn how to do things. And, and you know, um, also if you're doing production, you will get some elements of design. What we try and do actually is at the interview process, we will chat with you and talk you through it so that we are actually making sure that you're, you're on the right course for you. So don't worry too much about that at this stage. We will work with you at the interview to kind of make sure that, that you know, the right course for you is, is the one that we, if we are to make an offer, we're gonna make you offer the right course. Um, can I write a song for the devised piece based on the painting? Yes. I mean, it's it's up to you. It really is your own individual creative response, so it's up to you. Um, you look. I looked to apply through UCAS, and there was no option for acting musicals. Theatre, which is the course I'm interested in, do I just apply for acting? Yes. So you apply for the acting degree, um, and then you're considered for all three pathways. You're considered for acting, acting, acting musical theatre, and acting collaborative and devised theatre. Um, Hopefully that's covered. Does the classical and contemporary pieces need to be contrasting? Um, I am not Scott. They don't, they don't have to be. I mean, um, in the end, if you think about like, what do you want to show us through your self tape? Um, and the self tape has to be a good representation of you. So it's really up to you what you what you do with those and what you want to show us. Um, there is no hard and fast rule about kind of has to be this, has to be that. I mean, I would always say, you know, play characters and, 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 and perform pieces that are right for you. And that might be really contrasting pieces or it might be, you know, quite similar kind of character arcs, if you will. So it, it is totally up to you. Um, so I was wondering if you were on the straight acting course, if there is an opportunity for voice lessons, movement lessons, Yes, um, if you're, I mean, it won't be sort of singing and dance, it won't have the singing and dance, it'll be voice and movement will, will comprises like essential actor, actor training skills. So you will cover those. Um, is there anything that you wanted to add to that, Scott? No, that's it really. I mean, there's not singing, dancing is, yeah, it's, it's a full suite of different acting skills using different practitioners. So it's not all kind of like Stanislavski, for instance, it's a real range that we use. Um, any advice to perform Shakespeare, mistakes to avoid? If you mean like for your um, audition, um, if you're choosing a Shakespeare um, speech, um, it would, it's probably best to just make sure that you pick a character that you can in some way relate to, um, and not to go wildly outside of sort of, you know, someone who you could actually play. Um, so don't play if you're um, an 18 year old girl, like maybe don't play a 99 year old man, for instance. Um, so just make sure that you can relate to so make sure you really understand um, the character and understand the play. Make sure you've read the whole play because um, um, that will that will show um, beyond that, though, more technical things um, is probably practice is a very important part. Um, make sure you've rehearsed. Um, anything else to add to that, Scott? The only thing I would say about Shakespeare is that um, if you're playing female parts, I mean, Shakespeare um, writes a lot more detail for male parts as opposed to female parts, unfortunately. Um, so what I would suggest is in looking at the character, you know, you're not necessarily going to be able to find like loads and loads of different kind of emotional depths. But if you can find one thing that you really want to focus on, that's absolutely fine. Um, as I say, I think it is more challenging uh, finding really good kind of female Shakespeare roles. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, do think if you when you, when you are kind of doing your research, if you want to focus on a particular ele element of the character and kind of use that, then then you can certainly do that. Um, um, for the acting degree audition pieces, should you use your own accents for both the monologues and songs? Yes. Definitely use your own accent because we we are still you know it's still you that we want to see, um and it's not a sort of it's it's not an audition to see if you can do an accent, so it is to see it's about your acting and about your storytelling and about you. So definitely stick to your own accent. Um, for the song for the recall, it says one has to be a musical theatre course. For the song part, can you do a pop song for your first round, but musical theatre for recall? Yes. 
Yeah, you could do. I mean, the, the key thing goes back to what Sophie said earlier is, is just remember you're telling a story. So in terms of your choice of pop song, you know, you may want to, you know, really take the time to research what song is going to allow you to tell that story. Um, if you do a dance for the device part of the audition, can it be accompanied by any song? Yeah, again, it's up to you how that, you know, that really is your time to just do show us you in your what your the direction that you want to take things in creatively so if that is choosing a particular song then that's part of the, part of the performance and that's fine as, as long as as long as the the dance that is accompanied by a song is a true reflection of your um response to those paintings remember it has to come back to those paintings yeah remember it's part of one sort of um package response yeah. to the to the piece for contemporary speeches, what sort of monologue do you advise we choose? So um, we saw it really, again, is up to you. Um, it just needs to be uh, post-1960. Um, obviously, it's good to show depth of character and, and things like that, um, and not, not from a film. Um, but beyond that, it really, is, it really is up to you. So I would find something that you really connect with and go from there. Um, what are the key things you look for in a student at Central? What are the standout qualities that help you decide who's right for the courses? That's a really nice question. So um, there are our students were really different, and um, they're you know everyone brings a sort of sort of unique way of seeing the world to Central, which we really value. So we don't by any means want everyone to be the same, but um, there are certain things that we we have in common as a community, and one of those is the sort of ability and willingness to collaborate and work together. Um, and to you know see things from other people's points of view and that sort of thing. Um, I think when it comes to auditions, um, as I mentioned earlier, sort of a willingness to be open to direction and to sort of maybe stepping outside your comfort zone, not just doing always playing it safe. So our students do push boundaries and they do sort of um, experiment. So you know, as we mentioned earlier, if you're not wanting to be considered for musical theatre. Um, we would still advise that you do the song just because it shows that willingness. Um, so that sort of is covers, how would you say people stand out in auditions? We also say, you know, don't worry too much. Don't think about standing out because we're not really, it's not really about that. It's more about imagine that you're part, you're joining a company. So we want people who are sort of, you know, team players more than sort of look at me, I stand out. Um, because you're, you're going to be working towards how to tell stories with other people. Um, rather than how do I be the most standout person in the in the room? Do you want to add anything to that, Scott? I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. You know, you, in a way, you stand out by not trying to stand out. You know, mm. we're looking for people who aren't trying to stand out. We're looking for people who can be genuinely and authentic and authentically bring themselves out through their through their tape. So, mm. yeah, it's almost like a don't don't second guess what we want to see is a mm. really good strategy. Um, it comes back to that point that Sophie made about not um, recording your tape like hundreds and hundreds of times because you're always going to look at it and say, oh, this says this or this is that. Just, you know, do all your research, prepare, and then make sure that what you send us is a tape that you feel really well represents you. Good advice. Um, for the experimental arts and performance, is it compulsory to have 92 UCAS points? Or is there some leeway? There is leeway. Um, I think it was, uh, I think it was 92 or 96 to 120, if I recall. Um, and, and that's a range that we ask for. So we, we will typically offer within a range. Um, we can offer lower sometimes, but what we won't do is if, if, if you go through the interview process and we decide that we want to make an offer to you, we're not going to make an offer uh, that is at a grade range that is unrealistic for you. Um, we will always make an appropriate offer because the, the interview process is, is our main proxy for working out whether we think you'd be suitable for the course. So I would just say, don't worry too much about the UCAS points at this stage. Um, we'll obviously look at your UCAS application as a whole. Um, and then obviously if we do make you an offer, we'll always make an offer which we feel is realistic and appropriate because you know we having met you at the interview, we will have decided that we think you have a suitability for the course. Um, is there much emphasis on dance in the musical theatre course? Um, so, what I mean, you will be trained in all of the class, all of the classical musical theatre dancing skills, as well as sort of new dancing styles and things like that. Um, what we do say about our musical theatre course is that it is, um, I mean, you will 
definitely specialise in singing and dance, but you will um, receive the same actor training as the other two courses. So you, you will be trained as an actor first and foremost. So if you're a bit worried about the dance element, um, we'd say not to worry too much if, if that's something that um, you're concerned about, because um, really we train our students to be um, actors first and foremost and that is something that sets us apart a little bit from other musical theatre courses as well um so you will learn you will completely you know immerse yourself in musical theatre performance but um we will really want to see strong acting skills um most of all did you want to add anything to that scott i think that covers it to be honest. yeah um on the acting ba course is there an opportunity opportunity to do acting in many different mediums and are there any main practitioners you focus on? So um, many different mediums, um, if by which you mean stage and, and screen. Um, so the, the foundation of your training is on stage um, because that is the foundation of, of all sort of actor training, but you will get um, screen experience and many of our graduates, for any of our acting courses, our graduates have gone into um, careers in screen. Um, in terms of practitioners, we don't have any particular school or um, discipline that we're sort of tied to, but you do explore a lot of different ones. And we sort of throw a lot of things at you and you can sort of see what fits for you. So that you sort of have a, a toolbox that you can, you know, pick and choose from. Um, so there's no particular practitioner that we um, focus on, um, but you'll, you'll get to explore a whole range. Yeah, and that might include Stanislavski, Lecoq, Chekhov, there's a real it, it, you know we do look at a real broad range um so do people fill out this ucas side of things and then get contacted and how to self check if is um yes so once you apply through ucas you will um receive information about how to send in your audition self tape um you will definitely be invited to send in a self tape as long as you get your application in before the 26th of january so um, that's just something to remember. Can we write a song to sing? You can as part of the device piece. Um, I probably, we probably wouldn't, we wouldn't recommend that for the song, um, if you're as part of the song element of the audition, um, but you could if you wanted to for the uh, device piece. Um, and just, to, just to add, add, add on that really, and, and the reason we would say not to for the, um, that, that, so you can do it for the device piece, but the reason we would say not to for the song bit is just because remember that you're telling the story. And if, if it's something we don't know, um, then that's, it, it just makes it harder for you. I think it makes it more of a challenge um, because we have to unpick and we have to um, kind of pick up on things. Whereas, you know, if it's a song that is, is, is known, then it's a lot easier to, to have the context in which you're telling that story. Um, as an international student, um, if I get a recall to the second round of my audition, be it another self-tape or a live Zoom audition, um, it will be, for the second round, it could be either, couldn't it? Yeah, it'll depend, on, it'll depend on what course you're recalled for. When it comes to the third round, so the final recall, if you're an international student, you can come to the UK, but sometimes we may do a third round online. And this is pre-pandemic stuff, really. Before the pandemic, you know, international students uh, who weren't able to come to the UK, uh, distance kind of things is something we, 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 we've done for many years. Um, yeah, so you apply through normal UCAS, uh, not the UCAS Conservatoire, so it's just the normal UCAS system. Um, moving on, for the self-tape, do you suggest a lot of movement? Or is it just shoulders and face? Um, so... You want to keep it as simple as possible. Um, we do have on our website um, some guidance on the best way to sort of shoot it. So some, we basically give you some shoot some shooting options to how to frame it. Um, so whether it's sort of, sort of from the chest up or full body and that sort of thing. So take a look at that. That gives you really clear guidance. Um, I wouldn't do a lot of movement um, unless it's part of your device piece. Um, yeah, I, I mean, if you if 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 your take on the classical or contemporary monologue, you feel the best way to do that is to incorporate some movement. That's absolutely fine, and the shot types that you'll see on the website allow for that. 
um, because you know we're not just acting with our with our face, of course. But um, do do what's right for you in terms of the movement side of thing. That's a, a quite a subjective thing, I'd say. Yeah. So for the experiment theatre arts course, what kind of so for experiment that's experimental arts and performance, what kind of contact hours is it? Um, and what kind of portfolio would be expected? Could it be video work? So the contact hours again still um, very um, intensive. Um, Video work, yeah, so the portfolio, it can really be um, any manner of things. They want to see, video work would, would work. Um, they would want to see sort of, it can be poetry, it can be things you've drawn. They want to see um, just who you are creatively. Um, did you want to add anything to that, Scott? Yeah, I think the experimental arts, you know, it is all about, it's about that unique artistic voice. So again, your portfolio could have a real range of, of, of different things. Contact hours wise, of course, as you'd imagine, depending on what year, what time of the year, et cetera, the contact hours will vary. Um, but, but typically you are in uh, every day during the week and it can be, you know, it can be in that kind of 10 to five region, but again, it will differ. And obviously like when you're working on festivals or productions, again, things can, can change uh, quite a bit, but it is significant contact hours, don't worry. So um, for the acting course, is there any sort of theory work? Um, so, there is, I mean, there's always going to be theory sort of supporting um, what, what you're working on and your training, um, but you won't be doing sort of like long academic essays um, and, and dissertations and things like that on the acting course. You will be asked to reflect on your practice, um, but uh, it's that, yeah, there, I mean, it's, it is all sort of underpinned by theory because acting is, it does have theory behind it, um, but it, it's a practical course. Um, where do you submit your self tapes when supplying and um, when applying? So you'll be given uh, details of how to do that um, when you apply. Um, did you want to add anything to that, Scott? No, that's it. We we we, we can't give you the email address that you send it to quite <laughs> yet, unfortunately. Uh, otherwise, we'll just get lots of it, you risk kind of getting lots of tapes of people who haven't got an application and stuff. There's there's, there's very clear instructions you'll get um, once you've booked your self tape date. So for costume construction, what would we need to include in a portfolio? So it's a digital portfolio. Um, what we what we really like to see, what they really like to see is um, your, your process. So how you sort of, you know, move from maybe from the design to actually making the piece. Um, it's always best to choose a few really good pieces of work um, rather than just everything you've ever made. Um, and um, obviously think about layout and how it looks sort of on the page as well um um anything to add to that Scott? i think that last bit's really important actually yeah. when it comes to portfolios for all of the theater practice remember the way in which you lay out your stuff or the order even is still part of you telling us a story about you um and also don't be afraid to put in something that went horribly wrong if it's something that you've learned loads from like like sophie says we're looking at your process but we're looking at you know when it's not just about the final products that you do it's about how did you get there and like that's really important because when you're on the courses all of our courses really we always with we we are training you to be excellent and high level practitioners but we're also training you to be reflective practitioners there's one thing knowing how to do something right but it's about knowing why you're doing it and why why to do something in one way so you only do that through reflecting on what you're doing and why you're doing it so um the portfolio can really have anything you think that is suitable but as Sophie says not don't put everything that you've done on like a, a smaller selection so somewhere between six and ten items is far better than a selection of like 15 things because you know you want to have everything to be things that you are really happy to talk about um because we you know we could we, we will look at your portfolio before your interview and we will try and tailor your interview based around what we see in the portfolio so yeah put lots of effort and thought into into that um, so how big are the classes and how many people are in a year group roughly? So that obviously varies from course to course, but with our acting course, with our acting degree, um, each course has 18. So there's 18 on each pathway. Then for theatre practice, it can really range. So for some of them, it's as small as four, um, four to six. Um, then for something like stage management and technical theatre, it's, it's 20. So um, it really, it really does vary. Um, yeah. uh, with the drama applied theatre and education degree, what are the main elements to remember when applying? Any interview tips? Scott, do you want question. to? Good question. Um, 
Yeah, I think I think for the drama applied theatre and education, I think we really want to know one how you can um, well one that you that you're able to give us opinions about certain things. Like so, part of the reason we do the group interview is about how do you interact with others and how are you confident kind of giving your opinion about stuff because drama applied theatre and education looks at such. Um, you know, transformational use of drama. We want to also see that kind of that passion for using drama as a, as a tool um, for social or educative change. So, I mean, it's really, I'd say showing us your passion is absolutely key. And I think that goes across all of our courses. Um, show us your passion because, you know, these are specialist degrees, but they're also, as Sophie said, intensive degrees in terms of the contact hours. It, you know, really these courses are for people who are really passionate about it. So, um, that's the kind of main things really I always say like it's a good thing before an interview to just ask yourself the question right why do I want to do this degree why do I want to go into this career and that's a really great kind of prep question to ask yourself before you go into an interview because you can bet that that's one of the things we definitely want to know and maybe that's something you've touched upon in your personal statement uh, on UCAS and we want to explore that a little bit further so it's a good way to kind of um, yeah kind of prepare yourself for for that interview process. Okay. Hey, um... For the BA, actually BA course, how intense, physically intense, I mean, um, so we sort of covered that bit, but it is very um, intensive. I mean, it's, it's not physically intense in the sense that you're going to be like forced to do press ups all day or anything, but it is physically intense in that you'll sort of be there in the building in your, you know, there um, and not at home sort of on your laptop. Um, and the course is assessed in, in a few different ways, I think, isn't it, Scott? Yeah, so obviously you are being assessed for the practical work, but also um, for the BA Active course, again, I talked about reflective practitioners, we ask you to keep kind of like a, a journal, a logbook kind of thing and use that as a basis for reflective um, assessment as well. So um, it's, a, it's, it's a number of things. Um, but yeah, we, we, we look at like your reflective assessment at the end, end of every term as well. Um, so we've covered that one. Um, self tape recordings for the format do check out the audition process page because that will just give you very clear um, directions on on how to film it basically like what we what to include in the shot there's, um, also, there's also a really good video on that page as well um, yeah new, quite, quite a new video actually in the last couple of weeks that our current students have filmed which again gives you a really good kind of like end-to-end -end process of how to do the tape um when you create your own piece uh can you do a mix of song dance and acting again it's really up to you you don't have like a huge amount of time so it's I think 90 seconds uh, max um, or 30 to 90 seconds so you could do it shorter um, 30 minimum um, so I would just if, if that's something if you think that that would work within that time then you could do something that really um, gives a sense of how you've sort of responded to that painting then there's no reason that you can't do a mix um, What's the best way to showcase your skills in a self tape? Um, the best way is to just is to just show them. <laughs> no, um, the best way is to we we do advise that. I mean, again, if you look on the if you go onto the page that Scott mentioned where we have the video and the guidance, it it shows you how to film it in such a way that we really get to just see you, because that's gonna that's the most important thing. Like we don't want any distractions and we don't want it to be. It doesn't need to be fussy. Um, it just really needs to give a clear. Um, idea of you and what you can do so as long as you choose speeches that you know really work for you and play to your strengths and the same for the other areas um that will showcase your skills did you yeah i mean it's subject it's so subjective and it's individual to, to everyone just be true to yourself and don't try and second guess what we want to see really mm. can't stress that enough like um, there is no silver bullet, you know, you do this, therefore you get, in. it just doesn't work like that, because there's always going to be, from our point of view as well, an element of subjectiveness, and as Sophie said, every self-tape gets seen independently by at least two panellists, those two panellists might have, very, they, they'll all be very well trained, and they'll be, you know, they have a certain eye for detail, but they'll also have their own opinions, and in it, there is, a, a, you know, an element of subjectiveness to it, so, you know, there is no kind of, you know, thing that you, you have to as we mentioned earlier, a lot of people, some people do really struggle to, uh, you know, do an authentic performance, you know, putting themselves into the character as opposed to just pretending to play a character kind of thing. People do struggle with that a lot. So um, really take the time to do that prep. Really, really do. Can't stress that enough. 
Um, how many productions do students put on a year? So for the first two years, um, if you're on the acting course, you um, we don't sort of expose you to the public yet. You do closed performances. You'll still work on, um, you know, sharings and on putting your skills into practice, but you won't be doing public shows. In your third year, you do three public shows and a showcase. Um, but if you're doing theatre practice courses and things like that, you will, of course, do more working on, you'll do more work on productions sooner. Um, uh, and do audition, students audition for paid work in the industry whilst training? Uh, no. Um, I think, you know, it's partly about, um, you know, you're not fully trained, um, but also just about time. You're really going to be very busy uh, yeah. with your training. On, on the acting courses, the every each academic year is three 10 week terms. We expect all of our all of our students to be attending all those sessions. Um, it's really, really important because that 18 that Sophie mentioned on each of the course is it's a, a, a you know, well formed and thought out number. And we can't have students who are away doing stuff. Um, when you get into the final year, obviously, we're, you know, we're looking to get you signed by agents and get into work. And um, again, we wouldn't expect you to take paid work outside of that in the third, final year. There can be very rare exceptions where you know you might be getting the lead in a Hollywood movie or something, but as a as a as a rule, um, we wouldn't expect you. We need you kind of doing the sessions. Okay, um, we've covered that one about um, how many applicants. Um, I've learned two classical speeches. One is on the list, and one is not. Which one do you advise I choose? So the list is really just guidance. It's not a prescription. It's not saying that you should do anything for the list if the other one if you feel that the other one um shows your strengths more or that you can do it just do whichever one feels better i would say um you don't have to do any that are on the list um but if the one on the list feels like the right one to do then do that one. um in terms of fees does the republic of ireland count as international or is it the same as uk based fees the republic of ireland is international I believe so yeah uk yeah. uk nationals usually pay the home fee um but i think republic Ireland will count as eu um but we can check that with our admissions team that the, the thing with the the fees is is typically republic Ireland would be eu which would be international fees now um but do check because you know sometimes there are kind of um you know isolated kind of criteria and things like that that can um can change things but broadly speaking it would be international um, for the device section of the audition, does it have to strictly be just myself involved? For example, if I work with a partner and submitted that, would that be allowed? Um, we would really advise it's just it's just you. It's we really just want to focus on you. So you just anything like that would just it would probably be a bit of a distraction from you and your skills. Um, so yeah, we wouldn't advise that you involve anyone else in that part. Um, we do you accept deferred entry for the acting course. I mean, the short answer is no. <laughs> um, we don't. But um, in, I mean, yeah, very, very exceptional circumstances, maybe. But I don't, you know, that that rarely happens just because, you know, it's almost like choosing a company. There's only 18 people in each course. Um, it just we couldn't we couldn't really do that. Just to, um, just to add to that as well, I mean, we don't accept deferred entry for any of our courses at all. It's not just yeah. the acting course, yeah. but also part of the reason is because it's only fair, given how competitive a number of our courses are, that we are assessing you in a year based on the other people who are who are applying for that year. So it's as much a thing of fairness as anything else, I would say. OK. Um... What are, some of, what are some of the most memorable performances you can think of from people who studied at Central? I'm just really interested in learning more about the cool work people produce. I mean, I've been here for six years and I can say that for me, uh, there's been a number of uh, public productions that are very memorable. Um, Grand Hotel, which is one of our spring musicals, was incredible. Uh, that included uh, like a revolving stage. Also, the backdrop was like gold panels, which I, I think must have been an absolute nightmare for the lighting designer. Um, but also the theatre practice exhibition is always an absolute kind of like uh, highlight of the year. Um, some of the work that students produce, I've seen like life-size Iron Men and all sorts of like really cool stuff, including like virtual augmented reality pieces. So again, going back to what Sophie said about experimentation and kind of like really pushing the boundaries, there's some absolutely incredible work that that I've seen um, and also kind of like in the applied theatre area. I mean, one of the most moving things I've, I've, I've heard about, I wasn't there, but I heard about this, was some work that was done in, um, 
in a prison with some inmates who uh, some of our students worked with to put on a, a production that they that they performed in for their kids. So using drama as a tool for you know rehabilitation and and you know uh, keeping prisoners um, and their families close. So they, the the scope of the work is incredible, and it really does go across all of the courses that we that we um, provide. Um, also, I mean, you can also look at some of the work of our graduates because they've studied at Central. Um, so, I mean, a really good example, there's a few, but um, even now, um, Andrew Garfield in Tick Tick Boom does a really, really great performance. Um, uh, Kit Harrington in Testament of Youth, that's a really incredible performance. And another memorable one is, um, yeah, if you haven't seen Sound of Metal yet, I really recommend that just if you're interested in acting. Um, just because it is a really powerful performance from uh, Riz Ahmed. Um, is it okay to do a monologue traditionally performed by the opposite? Yep, yeah. you can do a monologue by any gender, um, whatever your gender is. Um, yes, so we've covered that. There's a lot of uh, live performances in the BA acting course. Um, if my audition song has an American accent, do I need to choose a different one with my own accent? Um, I think you'd need to define what you mean by has an American accent. I, we'd always like to suggest just doing it in your own accent because that's being your authentic to yourself. Mm. Um, you're telling the story. Um, the story may not need an American accent. Um, I think putting accents on can just, again, it's a, it's, it, it doesn't play to your strengths necessarily. And we shouldn't be judging you on how well you can do an accent at this stage. Um, what, okay, we've covered key attributes and candidates, but um, how is your drama school unique compared to others? That's a really good question. So, um, of course, you know, we're going to um, say our drama school's great. Um, but what, you know, before before saying that, it's, it is worth saying that it's really important that you go and you get a good um, feeling feel for all the drama schools because you really do want to go to a place that suits you. So whichever ones you're applying for, make sure you really get to know them, read about them, um, visit them if you can. Um, but the ways in which Central are unique, um, one way is that um, there's a real sense of community at Central. Um, and you can really feel that in the building. It has this incredible atmosphere. Um, there's also the quality of the teaching staff. Um, that is, a, again, a very unique um, thing that, that we have um, in that so many of our teachers are still in the industry um, and uh, out, outside of their teaching are putting on shows, um, designing, um, acting, directing. So we really do have that close connection with the industry in that way. I think the industry connection side of things is um a really uh, strong stre uh, a real strength of ours scott i'm sure you've got some other things well i just think we have a real focus on collaboration as well we see performance mm. making as a collaborative experience and you know you could be uh, the best actor in the world or you could be the best stage manager in the world but you have to also be the kind of person who people want to work with and so learning how to collaborate and learning how to work with other people is really important not just for whilst you're training but for when you go into the industry because Everyone who you encounter whilst at Central is a potential contact for the industry. And so, you know, it's a, it makes a big, big difference working in an environment where everyone is supportive and, and there to, to help you and support you to succeed rather than a competitive environment. And I think that's something we do really well. Sophie mentioned in her presentation about, you know, unique artistic voice or unique creative identity. That is so, so important for us. Um, and that really is something we focus on. And the only other thing I would just say is I think our student support is excellent. Like mm. we, talked about some of the, we talked about some of the student support mechanisms we have, but we really don't have a one size fits all um, process. We really do look at the individual and we, we really encourage like individual conversations with us at as early a stage as possible so that the support we provide is, is tailored. Um, for the device, Part, oh no, for the song, if you're doing a musical theatre song, can it be of the opposite sex if it suits your voice better? Um, yes. Um, for the devised part of the audition, could I write and perform a monologue? Yes. Um, so, for example, being a 22 year old woman doing a Shylock monologue wouldn't be advised. Um, I mean, if you really feel that you have a connection to the character of Shylock and that you then by all means, um, 
just you know that's that's a really general generally speaking piece of advice but if you think that you could you know really um that is Shylock's character that you could really connect with or what he's saying in that particular monologue then you know it is up to you um are the acting courses covered in student loans yes so as I mentioned earlier that's one of the great things about um us is that although we are a small specialist institution we are part of the University of London so we do our fees are the same as standard university fees and you do have access to student loans and that covers um, all of our courses all of our courses yeah um for, so we get quite a few questions about devised pieces um for the most part the answer is yes <laughs> if you want to do circus skills um as long as it responds to the piece to the painting as long as it's saying something and it's not just here's a skill i have um but for the most part if you want to to if you want to respond through the medium of circus skills then you can i would just add on that one if you are going to do aerial equipment anything that has a health and safety risk i would just advise you to risk assess your own space i mean that in the nicest possible way but um it's really important um how big we've done that how the other classes have so um we did touch on this already but um singing and dancing on the acting course is it evenly split um so it's not evenly split um it's definitely more acting focused but you will you know as i mentioned get a high level of acting and uh, sorry singing and dance training but you're being trained to be an actor first and foremost because um you know our our graduates do go on to sort of like leading roles and in order to undertake a leading role you need to have a really strong acting skills um that you know in musicals um so obviously dancing and singing is important but um having a really high level of um acting ability is the sort of focus of the course you typically, uh, you typically do uh, about eight hours of singing eight hours of dancing per week and that'll include like a real range you know one to one singing lessons group and then dance styles are really, really varied. There's a real like um, number of different dance styles that you learn. Um, so uh, covered that already. Um, for the audition tape, do you talk first? All of the I I have a look at the um, the video uh, on the process, but also that will all be detailed for you in the email for auditions. Uh, what would a typical day look like for a BA on acting student? Um, so it really varies um, depending on, um, you know, which at what stage you're at in your training. Um, but it, it, it would be, you know, you might, you might start with a warm up, um, go into a workshop. You might then do a some kind of class in a specific area. You might then begin working on a collaborative project with your peers. Um, it, it can it can really vary. Definitely, that's the first sort of two years. You're going to be looking at very sort of skills focused um, training, um, and then in your third year, you you could be in rehearsals for your shows. Um, you could be uh, meeting with our industry liaison as well. You could be filming your show reel. Um, you could be doing all sorts of things. So it, it really varies, but it would be quite packed. Um, do you need to be a great dancer to get onto the musical theatre course? Um, no. So, so obviously there is an element of dance on the course, um, but as you mentioned, um, we're looking for more than, than just that. Um, it's more about your um, ability to tell stories and uh, to act. Um, yeah. yeah, we don't we don't really do much in the way of assessment of dance at the audition stage. If you get to the final recall, you will do some movement work um, with the course leader. But again, it's not going to be complicated stuff. Um, we've got a few more, haven't we? And then we'll... We've got quite a yeah. few more um, <laughs> and we haven't got a huge amount of time left. So, Scott, I don't know if you want to. Yeah, Arch, should I just quickly run through and see if what we've covered yeah quickly um how would you suggest approaching monologue again that's really up to you that is uh, we would never um suggest um a way of uh doing that because i think that's got to be um individual um we do have audio recording facilities and we have a recording studio and so we do we do do that uh self-taking dawn's criteria of one editing video uh, it 
one video is what you will submit. So uh, yes, it needs to be one video, uh, please. Um, ooh, I think uh, we've answered that, answered that. Um, one question here about Matt, if you don't have massive previous experience acting, will it hold you back? Absolutely not, absolutely not. I can't stress that enough. Um, you know, we have genuinely had people, for instance, who have been on musical theatre course who have never had a singing lesson in their life before, or they hadn't been in a play in their life. That's no joke, that is genuine. Some people obviously start um, their training really young, but, you know, they and that is great, that can be a really useful experience. Some people pick it up really late, but they pick it up really fast, and that's that's fine. Or maybe, and sometimes that, that um, lack of experience can actually be a benefit sometimes because you haven't maybe picked up bad habits or other things. So there is no level of experience or thing that you have to have done. We look at every tape individually, and as I say, independently as well. Um, and so everyone really does have as much a chance as everyone else. I can't stress that enough. Uh, past speeches. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about backup. I'd settle on the one that you are most um, comfortable with. Do you have what I would say is uh, that an eighteen hundred speech isn't technically a classical speech. Ah, oh, sorry, I've made, made so it needs that. to be it needs to be pre seventeen hundred, um, and then the other one is post nineteen sixty. So I would yeah make sure that you choose a one that's definitely a classical speech. It needs to be written pre seventeen hundred. Yeah. Um, so this next one, I've lost my place now. In-person oh, tours? Um, uh, yes, there are, um, but um, uh, you can book them on the website. Um, just type in book a campus tour. But there, one note is that a lot of them are booked up. We are about to add some more uh, for in the new year. But um, yeah, if you if you do want to come and tour, we do. We do obviously recommend it. We're hoping that next term we will also be able to uh, open up uh, our productions for the public as well. Quite a few of these have been covered. Yeah, quite. Uh, student Finance England, yes, for the student loan. Um, what are your roles at Central? So myself and Sophie work on the student recruitment team. So we are involved. Um, we work very closely with the course leaders, actually, um, in making sure that our processes, are, our recruitment processes like the auditions and interviews are as inclusive and accessible and as fair as possible, as well as um, being out there and getting out there and kind of spreading the word about Central and about the benefits of um, arts training and specialist arts training, especially. So that's kind of in a nutshell what, what we do. Uh, the writing students can collaborate with other courses, albeit um, no, it's not a case of the writing students will write the things that the actors will, will perform. Um, there are kind of different opportunities for that kind of thing, um, but it's not quite a, a formal thing within the course. We do get a lot of our writing students who also perform their own work as well. So if you did mention kind of like solo performance for Baton Theatre and other things like that. So, yeah. Um, in terms of uh, any advice to get the most out of your training? I mean, that's a, I think that's a really great question, actually, I think. Mm immerse yourself and I mean that generally like not just in the training but also in all the other opportunities that come with the training we you will get like weekly ticket emails to like cheaper tickets for shows we really encourage you to go see lots of lots of different productions of different size and shapes um and and really like don't just I would say push it push things as much as you can like really do experiment and like look to to really like take things further question things that's really great like you know we really want you to go out of Central and go and change the world, change the industry, because that is exactly what we're preparing you for. We're not just training you and then out you go into an existing industry. The industry is changing a lot. And we at Central are part of that change and we want to be part of shaping that change for the better. So um, if you're passionate about, about kind of theatre and the performing arts and drama, we are a place to absolutely uh, apply for. Uh, we have another question about contact hours per week. Again, we can't give you an exact, this is what it is all the time because it changes. Um, it changes depending on what you're doing, but typically it's over 30 hours, I would say. But again, it can be a lot more than that sometimes. Uh, it really depends on what time of the year, what year um, you're in. Um, you know, there is no such thing as a, as a typical day on the acting course, I would say. Um, if it comes more naturally to sing a musical theatre song in American accent, is that right? Yeah, it, it, in the end, it is up to you what you do. Um, we just try and um, let you know kind of where and, and what has happened in the past and how that's been kind of 
um, received. Would you recommend sticking to published stage plays instead of TV shows? For yeah, I'd stick to that instead of TV shows personally. Um, but again, it is it is up to you. Um, I, th I say things like that, so it's a little bit like we sometimes get questions about can I do a a monologue in a a different a different um, language, for instance? Now, theoretically, yes, you can, but the that we always say the safer bet is to not do that. Partly because, again, if we can't understand the words that you're saying because it's in a different language, then it's more difficult for us to know how well you're telling the story. So it's all about kind of looking at right, what's the the safest way to do things so that you're able we're we're able, sorry, to really just focus on the most important thing of the taper, which is you. Okay, I think that's I think that's managed to get us up to up yeah. to speed on there. But you know, if you have more questions, you can always email us um, at uh, openevents at cssd.ac.uk. Um, so yeah, thanks all for coming. We will we have recorded this. We will be sending the recording out to everyone. Um, and yeah, thank you for your questions. Brilliant. Have a have a. We'll we'll end the call there. Have a lovely um, rest of the day, everyone. And uh, like I say, it's been wonderful to see so many uh, smiling faces uh, here today. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, do keep in touch with us. Bye.